A new troop, the Super Dragon, a new Siege Machine, the Flame Flinger, and lots of other additions. Let's explain everything from the new update in this one video. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Juno Sloth. The update has arrived, no sneak peeks for this one. So let's dive straight into it. New levels first, you might see that this is different, that's the new Siege Machine. I've got video chapters for the different areas in case you want to review any section easily. But the new collector levels are available from Town Hall 12 and above. All I mean by that is since it is a new level even town hall 14s need to do this upgrade but it is town hall 12 when we first get the new level 1.2 million of either gold or elixir depending on which collector you're upgrading with a six day upgrade time for the dark elixir drill they are upgraded to level 9 again at town hall 12 with a seven day upgrade time for 4 million elixir very quickly also letting you know since they stagger the wall upgrades across updates you can now upgrade every single wall piece to level 15 with still a 7 million upgrade cost per wall. We also clearly have a new level for the Siege Workshop. Now you know that I can bring you these sneak peek videos from the developer build. Sometimes things look a little bit different than in the live game. I'm presuming the level 6 upgrade is actually to unlock this new Siege Machine. It will cost you 17.5 million elixir with an 18 day upgrade time. And remember these are not taking into account the gold pass perks. I will thoroughly explain the new Siege Machine machine and super dragons but very quick there are balance changes a lot of troops are getting a buff essentially making them stronger let me just read this barbarian goblin giant wizard hog rider valkyrie pekka minion and healer the changes only impact in between town hall 6 and 11 mainly 7 through 10 essentially making the game slightly easier in an attempt to increase hit rates at those levels this is pretty cool as well the star bonus each day as you accumulate those five stars every league is having the star bonus increased the new siege machine is the flame flinger you can upgrade it to level four and i will quickly show you the cost and stats associated with each level whilst the damage per second and hit points are super important and you can see they do increase with each level so does the lifetime because the flame flinger has diminishing health much like the log launcher the lifetime is if it were to take zero damage but it can actually outrange a lot of defenses. Taking a brief look at the description then, it will target the defenses first, although a lot of the time it will actually take out the non-defensive buildings due to its area splash. It targets the ground. This just means it cannot fight up against air troops, but it can target any building because they are all on the ground. To showcase the flame flinger and explain it to you, I have set up this weird looking base let's deploy it right next to the wall and it will attack the closest defense in this case the air defense it outranges it anyway but even if it not the air defense could not attack it with it being a ground unit notice it is very slow but it deals a heavy amount of damage even after the defense goes down it has that burning splash effect from the fire spirits which takes out the gold storage from my testing this lasted 22 seconds the angle that the flame flinger attacks from does appear to matter i deployed it down next to the wall by this cannon and it did hit the gold storage one tile away every time in this instance only hitting it right at the end you can see another clear example of the ramping damage from the fire spirits and even just one of these will actually take down the gold storage easily outranging the archer tower despite it being a 10 tile targeting defense but the mortar will attack it the mortar has an 11 tile range so the flame flinger appears to have somewhere around the 10.5 tile range you can see that whilst the damage was diminishing it obviously gets finished off pretty quickly by the expo alongside the expo and the mortar the eagle artillery will outrange the flame flinger along with another defense can you guess it 
Let's find out. It is the Tesla. Whilst the Tesla only has a seven tire range, obviously it can pop inside this range next to the Flame Flinger. I guess technically the Town Hall could as well, but I've got a different trick to show you for that. I am being told that with the update, there will be some special offers within the shop. Whilst they're not displayed here on the developer build, if you are purchasing any of these, remember you can click the C in the top right corner before purchasing and enter your favorite content creator's code. My code is Judo and it helps to support the channel massively. It's much appreciated, my friends, and thank you for supporting a creator. What about that trick with the town hall? then well it's pretty simple if the town hall is towards the edge of the base you might be able to snipe this off with the flame flinger but there's a couple of things you need to consider firstly you probably want to take down some of the defenses in order to target the flame flinger faster towards the town hall remember it's very slow this might help you with the placement as well because you have to be careful on this if you mess up the placement, it might not outrange one of the defenses. Just because it can doesn't mean it will if you do not place it far enough away. Now, the town hall is not classed as a defense until it is woken up. So I would recommend an earthquake spell. This means that the flame flinger will be targeted to the town hall once you wake it up. And you've also decreased the health a little bit because this method, whilst it is super efficient in terms of you're not committing too much to it is not very efficient in terms of time taking out that town hall is massive but we are nigh on a minute into the raid so if you are doing this method i would recommend it but you have to be able to start the other part of your attack potentially a sui hero method adjacent to this since you will have somewhat already created the funnel but there you can see just how effective it is and the Town Hall Giga Poison doing nothing. While sniping off the Town Hall is a good method with the Flame Flinger, it's not the only thing you can do. Be careful of outside mortars. Remember, they will outrange the Flame Flinger. But as soon as they are down, deploy it. You have to use it early on in the attack to get the best value because it takes so long to get through the defenses. And you also have to start the next phase of your attack. I like to use a queen charge in combination with this because I use the flame flinger much like a grand warden walk in the sense that we can get high value defenses and create pathing at the same time. It's just that the complexity of things increases a little bit because you have to focus on two areas of the base at once to get the best value out of the flame flinger. And that's where I think one of the major negatives of this new siege machine is. To get that best value, you need to let it work in the background. And you're then focusing on multiple things at once. But notice how the Flame Flinger can outrange all of the defenses. Obviously, you have to be careful if there's Expo within that region. But we can get the single target Inferno down and an entire right hand side of the base, meaning that my queen is directed straight into the center, exactly where I want her to go. And not only that, after the Flame Flinger has taken down this area, you then have the reinforcement of Clan Castle troops. Now, you could put Hog Riders in this, much like we do with the Siege Barracks. I like to use a Dragon Rider and Loons if you're thinking there's limited air coverage in that area. Or maybe you could even sneak in Headhunters to then go after the enemy heroes or get creative with this. It is trying to be time efficient with this, so giving the Flame Flinger enough time to work, whilst also making sure you are getting enough value. And I think at the pro level, this new Siege Machine will be very good for that but i think it will be a more difficult siege machine to use particularly since you're going to have to focus on multiple parts of the attack at once but whilst i will move on to the super dragon you can share your thoughts already in the comments on the siege machine and maybe just edit your comments after you've 
heard about the Super Dragon. On to the Super Dragon. This is our 14th Super Troop. Its special ability is Roast, dealing continuous damage that splashes to nearby targets. Remember that the level of your Super Dragon matches the level of dragon in your laboratory. So a level seven dragon is required to unlock the Super Dragon. Now I have only tested the Town Hall 14 Super Dragon, a level nine. I am sure that the strategies will be relatively the same at Town Hall 12 and 13, but there is a bug here on the developer build and the damage per second is actually 448 for the Super Dragon. Hit points is 7,000, but the main thing here is the 40 housing space. It does attack any target, much like a dragon, but twice the housing space. Obviously, it does have more damage per second and hit points, but not twice as much. It does have that extra little ability, but it is nothing compared to the chains of the E-Dragon, which obviously is less housing space as well. But again, the DPS and hit points of the Super Dragon are higher than the E-Dragon. Let's show you it. As you see, the Super Dragon has that splash whereby it hits the buildings, but it's actually only buildings that is touching that first building. I compared this with the regular dragon and the dragon rider together when I did the comparison separate. They were just so far apart. Notice the super dragon is able to take out all of these buildings. The dragon and the dragon rider are not, but all of the buildings were touching together. How often do we find bases like that though? Not very often. So in this example, when I moved the buildings to be just one tile apart, the Super Dragon cannot chain through them. The E-Dragon could chain through the buildings in this scenario and multiple of them. A lot more comparable this time to the Dragon and Dragon Rider, the Hydra that we typically use, which does get through this set of buildings and the Super Dragon does not. So not quite as user-friendly against a variety of bases, I would say, but it does have this. Not only will it chain to the building behind, but the buildings to the side as well. Now the splash damage is not the same as the building that the Super Dragon is actually targeting. So it will mean that you take down the initial building beforehand, causing it to reroute and not get as much value anyway. So you're going to need multiple Super Dragons for this to really take effect, but something that is worth noting. In terms of defense with the Super Dragon, I can't see it being as useful as other combinations we already have. Just a single poison will slow it down enough that it does virtually no damage. I have been wrong about these predictions before on the defense of Clan Castle, but I can't see it overtaking the combinations we already typically use. Remember the flame flinger technique I showed you earlier to get the town hall? I've been using that with the super dragons. Flame flinger on one side, my heroes on the other, setting up pathing for the super dragons to move directly through the middle of the base, because I feel you need quite a few spells to commit to the super dragons. Now I didn't get as long on the developer build this time, hence why there were no sneak peeks, but with me traveling back from LA and world finals as well, I only tested as much as I could. I'm sure there's other methods. I will say that the heal spell I think will be very good for these super dragons since they have such a high amount of hit points. I actually had a bunch of earthquakes in this attack because I was testing with the flame flinger in the town hall. But when I was using the super dragons alongside a queen charge, I felt like I had to commit that many spells to the queen charge that these super dragons were just used on the back end and the dragon riders probably gave better value. So I feel the super dragons, you are going to need quite a few spells and therefore a hero dive, the flame flinger, I felt was the best option in terms of their strategy and use case, but I did find something else. Also wanted to quickly remind you before I show you this technique of the limited edition judo sloth merchandise, the golden sloth edition to celebrate the arrival of our 1 million gold play button. Available for 14 days only, but we're already a good chunk of days into that t-shirts hoodies they are awesome my friends after the video 
Go check the link in the description if you're interested. A new type of Hydra, the E-Dragons and the Super Dragons. I tested this against a few different base designs. I had mixed success, being honest with you, but it worked well enough that since the E-Drags are very popular, I wanted to share it with you. The Ice Golem in front of the Queen I felt gave me good value, alongside the King on the other side to set up pathing, and I deployed everything the way that we typically do with the E-Drags. Two rage spells side by side with the early warden ability, the headhunters moving through, and the battle blimp. I didn't always get the battle blimp to the town hall, but I had rage and freeze spells to try and help my dragons moving through the base, particularly with the air sweepers. I liked to delay my royal champion, potentially use her towards any of the air defense on the perimeter of the base, but just making sure that wherever my E-Dragons and Super Dragons peeled off to, I was ready to adapt with the royal champion. And honestly, it was a very fast attack. I feel like the combination of E-Dragons and Super Dragons helped in terms of taking out the variety in bases. Maybe it's something you want to test. I certainly will be using more of it. And obviously, as the update is in the hands of millions of players, when we do find new techniques, I'll be sure to share them with you. We also have two limited edition items in this update. We have the Santa Surprise spell. Now, this one is not permanent. Again, these two are limited edition. We've seen the Santa Surprise spell Previously, it works very similar to the lightning spell, and being honest with you, I would just recommend using the lightning spell. Looking at the stats of this spell, you could get better value from it, but it's so sporadic. If we use two of them onto the air defense, that is four spell capacity, Santa moves in, drops the presence, and we don't even get the air defense. Some of them miss. Comparing that to the lightning spell, if we use four of them, which is the same spell capacity, air defense and archer towers go down. So I'd recommend the lightning spell, but that's how the Santa surprise spell works. We also have the Ice Wizard, which is personally one of my favorite limited edition troops. If we compare it to the Wizard, you'll notice that the damage per second is actually less, but it targets defenses, and it also slows the defenses down with a freezing style effect when it attacks them. Showing you a quick comparison of the regular Wizard and the Ice Wizard, you will notice that the Ice Wizard bypasses the non-defensive building in in order to get to the defense like i said it's also freezing and slowing down that defense not stopping it altogether but just slowing it down and that actually helps to protect the giant so you can see how much more valuable it is just know that the level of your ice wizard will be based on your town hall level you do not need to upgrade it in the lab they're great for funneling if you want to see a little bit more gameplay of the ice wizard alongside every single limited edition troop in the game i made a video explaining them all it is linked on your screen with the subscribe button you guys take care and i will We'll see you in the next video.